There's a deck, with cards numbered 0 through 10. In this game, you win the number that you draw on the last round that you play. The maximum number of rounds is limited to n, but you can choose to stop at any time. Write a function that returns the expected value uh, of your winnings for any value of n. So I'm going to wait a couple of seconds for you to pause the video just in case you want to work through this on your own. Uh, and then feel free to uh, unpause if you get stuck or want to see parts of my solution. Okay, so first I'm going to think about the winnings as being, this is on just one uh, draw from the deck, as being uniform from uh, 0 to 10, and this is a discrete uniform. So then the expected winnings is going to be uh, the start of the uniform plus the end of the uniform divided by 2. Uh, so that's 0 plus 10 divided by 2, that's 10 over 2, which is 5. So now I'm going to just start thinking through what happens on um, a couple of rounds and see if there's any uh, sort of pattern. So on the first round, uh, all that happens is that we draw some winnings and the expected winning on uh, the single round um, is 5 since we only draw the winning once. So we draw some winning and the expected value of that uh, is 5. And so this means that the expected value of this game, if we only have one round, uh, has to be 5. Okay, so what happens when there's two rounds? Now n is 2, and the first thing that happens is we draw some uh, winning from the deck. And then we get to decide if we want to stop this round or if we want to play again. And so when we're evaluating this decision of whether or not we want to play again, the thing that we should consider is whether we'll make more on the second round than we did on this round. That is, if we, if we expect to make more the next round than we had made uh, on this round, which more formally is we're checking whether the winnings that we got just now is more than the winnings that we would expect to get from the game when n is 1. And so there's a set of values where we would not want to play again and a set of values where we would want to play again. The values where we would not want to play again uh, I'll call Sn, and these would be all the values of w that are more than what we would expect to get uh, playing kind of the game that's left when this round is gone, which is uh, the game where n is 1. And so this set of values uh, comprises 6 out of the 11 um, total values that w could take. So the probability of kind of ending up with one of these values in a world where we say no is 6 elevenths. And if we're kind of in this world, then uh, we could have gotten, if we're in this world where we say no, then we could have gotten any of the values in the set. So the expected value of this end of the game is the expected value of this set. Since the set uh, consists of some numbers that are kind of uniformly selected, uh, we could treat the value that we get here as being uniform from 5 to 10. So the expected value is 10 plus 5 over 2. Okay, so alternatively we could have gotten kind of a number from the set of numbers uh, that are less than the expected value of the first round of the game. And so if we ended up in this world, then we would uh, choose to play the game again. And since this world happens for 5 out of the 11 outcomes that W could take, the probability of being in this world is 5 elevenths. And now, the expected value of this world doesn't really depend on um, the set of values, since we're going to uh, play the game again, this time with n equals 1, because we just used up our current round. So the expected value in this world is the expected value um, of this game with one last round. So I just want to be super clear with the notation here. Kind of what I'm saying is that the expected value, uh, if we get a number from this set, is the expected value of this game when we have one fewer rounds, because we just used the current round. So then what is the expected value of this game overall when uh, we have two rounds available? That will be the probability that we choose to end the game on this round times the expected value of uh, what we get when we choose to end the game on this round. Uh, plus the other kind of outcome that can occur is that we choose to uh, play another round, um, in which case the expected value is the expected value of this whole game uh, when we have one fewer rounds. Cool, and then we just plug in numbers. 
and that ends up being uh, 70 elevenths, which to make it more easily comparable uh, later on I'll break this down into uh, 6 plus 4 elevenths. Okay, so you might already kind of see some sort of pattern that by, that's uh, starting to emerge here. Um, just to sort of solidify that and also to investigate one more round, I'm going to look at what happens when n is 3. So when there are three rounds, um, this third round kind of starts with us drawing uh, a number again, and then we get to decide whether we want to stop at this round or if we want to play again. And we'll make this decision kind of in the same way that we did uh, in the world where there were only two rounds available to us. That is, we'll see if the um, value that we drew is greater than the expected value of playing this game again, um, which would be kind of the same as the expected value of playing this game with only two rounds instead of three. So now I'm going to go through the steps of constructing sets where we make the different decisions, uh, just like I did earlier. So first the set of the outcomes where we uh, would decide to stop the game. So this time that set is the numbers 7, 8, 9, 10, and that's because these are the numbers that are higher than the expected value of this game with two rounds, uh, which is 6 point era, which is 6 and 4 elevenths that we found earlier. Uh, so now the set is the values 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, just to be clear again, these are values of w, and the reason that we only pick out these values is because these are the values that w could take that are higher than the expected value of playing this game uh, again, which would be playing this game with only two rounds left, uh, which is what we found in the earlier problem. And so the probability of this happening is uh, 4 out of 11, that's these four outcomes out of the 11 possible values that w could take. And the expected value we can again kind of treat as, uh, we could treat the outcome here as uniform from 0 to 10, so the expected value is 10 plus 7 over 2. Uh, and then now I'm going to go through the steps kind of identical to what I did earlier um, for the set of outcomes where we choose to play the game again. So we would play the game again if we draw a 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, and the probability of us drawing any of those uh, is 7 um, outcomes out of the 11 possible values that W could take. And then if we do draw one of these, um, our expected value is, since we're, since we started with three rounds, we just spent one round here, uh, the expected value would be the expected value of this game when we only have two rounds left. Okay, so then now we have the pieces that we need to find the expected value of this game uh, when we have three rounds available to us. And that'll be the probability that on this uh, first round of a game where we have three rounds available, uh, we decide to end the game now, times the value of kind of a world where that happens, plus the probability that we actually end up being in a world where we choose to play the game again, um, times the value uh, of that world. And then now we can just plug in numbers. Okay, and just to be clear, the 70 out of 11 came from this value when um, value of the game when we only have two rounds left. Uh, so now we've thought through kind of what happens for the first three values of n, and we've seen some patterns. Uh, I think it's time to start programming up a uh, function for this. So I'm going to do a sketch of the function in Python, and I'm going to call the function ev, and it will take an argument n. And now, since we've been seeing that the expected values of a game with a certain number of rounds depends on the expected value of a game with uh, n minus 1 number of rounds, I'm going to write a recursive solution. And when you're writing a recursive solution, you have to kind of first define a couple base cases. And even though it doesn't really make sense to have a number of rounds that's less than 0, uh, I'm going to write the function to be robust against such a thing. So if the number of rounds is less than or equal to 0, uh, we're going to return 0. And then at the very beginning of the problem we saw that when the round, when we only have one round, uh, the expected value of that is 5. So I'm going to hard code that in. Okay, so now kind of thinking through uh, how this works, we don't really need to simulate drawing a, a card um, because we're only interested in expected values. We don't necessarily need to simulate whether or not we play again, but we do need to figure out the probabilities of playing again or not playing again uh, and the respective expected values. 
to do that, we need to get kind of these sets of outcomes. And to do that, we need to know the expected value from uh, the game when we have one fewer round. So I'm going to create a variable um, called evnm1, which is the expected value of this game uh, with one fewer rounds. And to help with getting those sets of outcomes and the probabilities of uh, when we decide to play again and don't decide to play again, I'm going to create a list of the values that w could take. So that's code to do it, but uh, what this code will do is create a list of the values 0 through 10. Okay, now the next step is to write some code that will compute the expected value uh, for this round. But before I do that, I'm going to think about kind of what these numbers that are going into this uh, really are. And so this 4 represents the number of values that are strictly greater than the expected value of this game if we only had uh, one fewer rounds available to us. So one way to express that with the variables that we have is that it's the number of values, which is the length of this list of values that I've made. And so that's the total number of possible outcomes, the uh, total number of values that W could take. And then we want to take out the number of values that are not greater than the expected value of this game, uh, having one fewer rounds. Uh, and so in this snippet of code, this represents the expected value of the game if we had one fewer rounds, and the floor function will round this down. So for example, 7.5 would become 7, and then this is the total number of outcomes, which is 11, so then 11 minus 7 would be 4. This 11 represents the number of possible outcomes that W could take, number of possible values W could take. This 2 is just a constant that comes into sort of taking half of the distance uh, for this uniform variable. And this 17 is actually the lowest value that is greater than the expected value of the game when there's one fewer round, uh, plus the maximum value. So with the variables that we have, we could get this uh, with the following. So this part of it uh, takes the expected value from the game when there's one fewer round, adds one to it, and then this int function uh, forces that to round down again. So for example, if the expected value of the game when there's one fewer round is 6 plus 4 elevenths, uh, when we add one to it, it'll be 7 plus 4 elevenths, and then when we run this through the int function, uh, that will return the number 8, and when 8 is used as an index uh, in the set of values that W can take, that will bring back the value 7, uh, remembering that Python starts indexing at 0. And the maximum value that uh, our winnings can take is 10, so then 7 plus 10 is where that 17 is coming from. This 7 represents the number of outcomes where the value that we've won in this round is less than the expected value of this game with one fewer rounds, uh, which we found before. Uh, here that could be represented again with the floor of the expected value of the game uh, with one fewer rounds. And this last term is the expected value of the game when there's one fewer rounds. Okay, so now we have all the pieces that we need to compute the expected value of this game for any uh, number of rounds. But just to make the code a little bit more readable, I'm going to create um, some of these things uh, as their own variables. So I'll make a few more intermittent variables, like the number of possible outcomes, and the number of outcomes where we would choose to play again. So A for again. And I'll create a variable for the probability that we play again, and one for the expected value uh, if we choose not to play again. And so that comes out of this calculation that we did a little bit earlier. And now we have all the pieces to kind of compute the expected value for any number of rounds uh, in sort of a clean way. So I'll call that expected value EV. And it'll be the probability that we stop times the expected value when we stop. Plus the probability that we choose to play again times the expected value of this game again when we have one fewer rounds.
And then one final thing that we have to do is return this value when the function is called. And that finishes up this algorithm. If you know a better way to program this up, please leave it in the comments below. So I have a few more things to say before I end this video. First, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below so that they could be addressed. Second, these videos actually take time to make, and that's time that I could spend doing things that are more fun, like exploring San Francisco. So if you like this video, please make it official by clicking the like button below, and that'll let me know that these are valuable and that I should continue making them. And then uh, finally, try subscribing if you want to see the latest videos. Thank you for watching.